Today at ShopDap.com, we're going to be doing a valve cover gasket and timing chain tensioner on our 18T Audi TT. Okay, so we are going to be taking apart this car. Uh, this car has an oil leak. Uh, oil leaks on pretty much every 18T Volkswagen or Audi is going to be coming from the uh, valve cover gasket or the chain tensioner seal, potentially both. This car did have oil in the spark plug holes, which you'll see when we take this valve cover off, or you'll see that it, there's a seal between the spark plug holes. So clearly the valve cover gasket is leaking. The chain tensioner seal is also leaking on this car and it's running down the side of the engine, uh, causing some oil to be uh, coming down underneath the vehicle. So we're gonna be addressing that and then cleaning it up uh, to make sure that everything is good. Okay, so this car doesn't have an engine cover as you'd normally see. Normally TTs have engine covers all over the place. Um, we're gonna start by taking off these hoses right here. And you have to get all of this stuff here that's on top of this valve cover out of the way, including this boost pipe here. This runs over to the intercooler on this side and the TTs have two intercoolers, two side mount intercoolers, one on this side, one on the other for the 225 cars. Uh, so it has this crossover pipe that you wouldn't see on most transverse 180s. And so we can pop these up and out of the way here. And then we got these 13s that mount this pipe on. And these clamps kind of just hook on and then over. So take that one off, take this one off. You don't want them to fall down on us. And then we should be able to take off this hose here. Try to get this pipe out of the way completely. And we're free on this side. I'm gonna take this hose clamp out of the way just so that we don't knock it down into the engine bay. And we got this last clamp here on the other side here. I'll loosen this thing more than I think I necessarily should just to make sure we don't have to struggle with it. All right, I am actually gonna start breaking these five millimeters loose. We don't have that pipe off yet, but because of the location of this vacuum, this vacuum uh, reservoir right here, this thing's kind of in the way a little bit. So I'm gonna take this other stuff off first. And so you have this five millimeter Allen holding on one of these brackets. I'll unplug this. Get that out of the way. And there's a 10 millimeter here holding this in place. And we're just gonna pull this vacuum pump up. And that hose off the side here. Now this should be able to pull completely out of the way there. And then we can see our other items we have here. Now we can pull this off the side of this bracket just to slide it out of the way. And we can kind of take this, and move it forward. Now we can move these brackets out of the way. It gives us a little more play to work with these hoses. You can remove this from the top of this diverter valve. This is actually the original diverter valve because you can tell all these clamps here are actually are all original clamps. They are one-time use clamps that uh, generally would get replaced with other stuff. So most likely that's the original diverter valve, which is kind of surprising. Take all this 10 millimeter right here, this bracket, and then the rest of these are all five millimeters holding all of this stuff down. Now, anytime you're taking out these kind of bolts, you wanna make sure you at least note the length of them. And if any of them are different, make sure they go in the right place. I think these are all the same bolts. If my memory serves correctly, but you will want to double check because if you get too much depth into any of these places in the engine, you could have a serious problem on your hands. I've heard of people putting the wrong transmission bolts in the wrong place and crack the block. Now this goes out of the way. All right, now that we've cleared that off, I've loosened this this clamp the rest of the way. I've also pried a little bit against here to get this off. And there we go. 
And again, clamp out of the way. All right, now we have to take this bracket off here. This is heat shielding and it has this metal button here that retains it. We're gonna pop that out of place and then move this out of the way. And then we should be able to get to our six millimeters right here on the valve cover. So we gotta get these six millimeters loosened and we're gonna get this crack loose and take this cover off. And now I'm gonna loosen this coil. This last bolt's kind of tough to get to, so what I'm gonna do is try to take this coil out and it should help give us the clearance we need to get better access to it. And we're gonna take off these connectors. And as you can see, these connectors are thoroughly broken and we do have videos where we've talked about that and shown how to replace connectors on a lot of Volkswagen models. So that's something you're going to want to look at if you need to replace your ignition coil connectors. All right. And we should be able to pop that up. And you can see there's a little bit of oil here on this coil because that is our valve cover leak. This should give us the clearance we need now to get in there. All right, we're gonna get this, these last connectors off here. And that one didn't have any oil. All right, now we're gonna take this 10 millimeter ground off here. And this can pull out of the way here. And that one's got some oil on it too. So we have a bunch of oil there. And this harness now has a connector here that kind of clamps on. So what you have to do is push down, pull it out. It kind of has a clasp. And then you can get this entire harness out of the way here. Now there is some heat shielding on there that does seem to get in the way a little bit. So we have that, all those connectors off and we can pull this stuff up and out of the way. All right, just so I can show you, this is something that you probably won't have to do if you're doing this on your own, but I'm doing this to show people uh, and we're probably gonna have too much hose blocking things if we don't do this. So I'm pulling this hose off the uh, diverter valve and so what I'm gonna do is just take pliers and I'm gonna work it up while I apply a little bit of pressure. So this, in this case, we probably can get away with just doing that and then we can push this clamp back in place and because this is all vacuum based this actually should be fine the way it is so we have that clear and now i'm going to take this clamp off here and get this hose off so that this this metal pipe here can separate um, so i'm going to take this 10 millimeter off over here and i'm going to take this clamp off right here all right now that's completely free and i'm going to Take this clamp off if you're not familiar with hose clamp pliers. If you're working on VW and Audi stuff, these are extremely valuable and you will not want to be without them. We will have Nathan link to them so that you can find out more of the info if you need to. Uh, but messing with those clamps without the correct pliers is really not going to be easy. So I'm also taking a pick and what I do is just get it inside the hose here and then I run it around the edge which will help us break this loose from this pipe. If you don't do this first, you'll probably struggle to get this hose off and potentially break it uh, beforehand before trying to actually get it off. These check valves are super fragile too, so you gotta be super careful. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Now we have all of our hoses here, or stuff here we can slide out of the way and we're basically clear of the valve cover minus this hose right here. There's a mounting bracket back here and then there's also all of this heat shielding back here has torques that run along the back. I'm not sure you're really gonna need to take these torques off, but for visibility, I'm going to go ahead and remove those. So just so that we can see exactly what we got going on because there should be 10 millimeters on the other side. I'm not sure 
if you're gonna be able to take them off or not without with that on there. So I'm gonna take them off. All right, let's crack all these T30s loose here. And that should be our last one. And now we can swing this guy up and out of the way here to access. There should be all of our 10 mils along the back of this thing. Now I'll pop this timing belt cover off. We don't need to do anything, I believe, other than clear it here to allow the valve cover up and over. And now we have a 10 millimeter back here and then this hose clamp right here. And then we should be able to take this valve cover off. Now we're gonna remove this clamp. These are one time use, so you actually have to cut them off. And so what I like to do is just cut them in the center and then spread them open. Depending on how sharp your dikes are, they may cut easily or not. And then you'll have to put a clamp onto that. Usually you'll just put a regular hose clamp. Now this, these hoses, you have to be super careful because when these cars get old, the, they get pretty mushy from the oil that's on them. So it starts to kind of eat away at the rubber. So when you start to uh, mess with these hoses, you'll, you get, usually you can just kind of squeeze them and get an idea of how bad they are. If you squeeze it and they kind of just collapse in on themselves, this one doesn't seem that bad. Um, but if they do that, then you'll know that you got a problem and there's a good chance this hose will tear when you actually go to take it off. So I'm just going to run this pick around there real quick. This will kind of break it loose from the valve cover and then it should be loose enough to kind of slide it out of the way here. And, and it's free from the, from the valve cover there. So I'm going to take this 10 millimeter off back here. That is just a bracket on the back here for that harness. Now, we should have everything clear for us to take off our valve cover. Now we're gonna take off all these nuts and you will wanna make sure any of this debris that's in here you get out. And I'm gonna take this, just start taking these nuts off. And we're gonna throw them in our magnetic tray again. You don't wanna lose these things and you wanna make sure yeah, you don't drop them inside anywhere. Some people may want to protect inside there, put some rags in there. Um, we have magnetic um, magnets to pull, pick up anything if we drop a nut in there or anything, so we're not super worried about it. But now the thing you want to make sure you do when you take these off in the back is. What I do is take them off so you know they're 100% off. You can kind of watch it as it wiggles around. Grab your finger kind of beneath it, underneath of it, and pull it up with the socket like that. You could always, again, run a magnet down there next to it as you pull it up if you need to. I'm gonna double check. I believe that's all of our 10 millimeters that hold this on, but it's been probably about a decade since I've done a valve cover on a 18T. And I believe that's all, so we're gonna pop up our valve cover. All right, so what we're gonna do is take this big screwdriver and we're just gonna pop up from here, right underneath. And again, if you get resistance when you're doing this, then you know you maybe don't have everything off. So we're gonna pop that up there and you should see it kind of loosen up everywhere along the way. Now, you'll see it wiggle, but you're not gonna really just have it fall off because the way it's on these studs, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of wiggle it back and forth and work it up. Okay, now we're up and out of the way. I did have to get a screwdriver and just bend this back just slightly, just a tiny little bit. And we got our valve cover off. All right, now we're gonna talk about the chain tensioner seal. This is the uh, timing chain that ties the camshafts together. Now on later model cars that have variable valve timing, this car doesn't have that. You would have an electrical plug. There's like a solenoid that attaches here and you'd have a plug there. Uh, this car doesn't have that, so you, but you still have the mounting for that and there's a gasket here. Now th it's leaking all down this side of the engine. So it uses a, uh, a flat 
uh, a flat metal gasket as well as a half moon underneath of it and that's what's generally going to be leaking so you i'm going to get so we got brake clean here we're going to get this thing cleaned up over here uh, then we're going to pull this valve cover off kind of clean up a little bit of that more with this brake clean and uh, you always want to, whenever you do fix oil leaks you want to make sure that you clean it up thoroughly that way when you go back after doing the install you know for sure one way or the other whether your leak is completely resolved or not all right now we spray that down a little bit i'm just going to get this valve cover up and out of the way and what i usually do is pop it loose sometimes i do get hung up where you need a pick or something to to break them loose from the valve cover itself pick or a screwdriver or something like that they'll get really in these channels like that especially this one has probably been on the car since it was original maybe i would have expected that maybe it had been replaced before but tough to say now obviously coming up you don't really care if you break it or bend it or whatever uh, when you go back on you want to make sure this valve cover kind of goes down there all evenly and at the same time because you don't want to bend any of this stuff you're pretty st stuck on there Get them popped up, same deal. And again, this one will come up kind of together. But now, what you can do, depending on how you're planning on cleaning it, if you have like this car that has um, issues with the spark plug holes leaking, what I do is first of all, you always want to clean your mating surfaces where your new gasket's going to go. And then, if you have oil in your spark plug holes, what you could have done is you can either do it before you take the valve cover off or after, uh, and this may be tough depending on the person and if you have the ability to do it, but uh, is take brake clean, spray it down there with the spark plug still in there, and then use compressed air to blow it out. That will, that will clean everything and get any potential pooling you have of oil in there. You can stick rags in there and try to clean it all out, but you're never really going to get it as clean as if you're processing everything with brake clean or throttle body cleaner or something, some sort of agent that will get rid of that oil in there and then spray it out. So I'm also going to clean up this mating surface here. I will spray it down in a minute. Um, if you look back here at the back, it is pretty gooped up here and that is clearly a place that this has been leaking probably for a while. So that is something we're gonna have to scrape off there and clean up pretty good. Now we are going to take this chain tensioner and we're gonna compress it. So basically this chain tensioner here has to be loosened and compressed so that it will allow enough movement in this chain to allow you to lift it up and remove this gasket from underneath here. So there's a special tool here that threads in. There's a hole down here that you can look at and thread it in. So I'm gonna get this threaded in here and you have to make sure you get it in the right place and it sits on this brown guide between the chain and the tensioner here. So we're going to get this in there. It's threading cleanly. You don't want to just tighten this thing down until you know it's in a good place as far as the threads are clean. And it is hydraulic. So I just heard a squirt a little bit. That's from the oil that's inside that tensioner. And I'm going to keep turning this thing. You can see the chain starting to loosen here. I'm going to keep turning this thing until it bottoms out. You want to have as much space to play with as possible when you do this because uh, it can be a little bit difficult to get this stuff from the gasket and stuff underneath out. I think we're probably in a good space here. So we are going to take these torques loose right here, three of them. And I think actually if you have an electric one, you might have four. I can't recall. Take our T30s here. Break this loose. Break that loose. And then break this loose. One thing I always would make a note of with these is make sure you're pushing down on this Torx when you crack these things loose because it always seems like it's easy if you have a bad angle on these they, they can rotate the torques can kind of rotate out of place and you can end up 
kind of stripping them. So just be careful. You don't want to strip these. You'll regret it. You'll have a really challenging time with this procedure. All right, I did forget this. Actually, this bolt right here also needs to be taken out on the other side of the tensioner right here. And as you can see, now it's pretty loose in there. And now that's all loose and you can see you got a lot more to work with now for getting your chain tensioner out. And now that you have this loose, you can see there's this blue, this black and blue thing right here. This is the gasket we're gonna be replacing. And there is a retainer right here that you gotta pop it up and over. So we're gonna get that up. You're gonna pop it up at the back here and you should be able to clear it from this chain tensioner and slide it out from underneath here. Okay, so this half moon here is actually what we're gonna about to take out. So this is inside here underneath. And so what we're using is a 90 degree pick. Um, again, if you don't have picks, they're really super valuable for jobs like this. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is actually take this pick, stick it into the rubber and actually slide it kind of up and out. And so you can see here, these things get pretty nasty and these are a very common leak point as well for these particular jobs. So, uh, but going in, going out is pretty easy because you can just jam a pick into it and it doesn't matter what happens to it. Uh, going back in is a little bit harder, uh, but we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. Make sure you clean all these surfaces real well. Make sure you scrape any type of material that you have clean up the surface with this pick a little bit and then a rag and some brake clean to get make sure you get underneath this thing as much as possible. All right, so now we have our half moon going in, everything's all cleaned up in there. And so what I'm gonna do is feed it in from this side and push it towards the back side and then put my finger in here to stop it. This, you can see there's a channel here. Basically one side is supposed to sit inside the cylinder head and the other side has a channel kind of in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is flip this up. This is something that you're kind of gonna do by feel and you can kind of get it so you don't have to go completely from the side but for the most part you're not going to be able to see exactly where you're going here. Now you should be able to see once you're in that channel. You should sit down in there. And a screwdriver, we did remove the uh, engine hoist uh, hook there just because we are trying to get a better angle at this. It's just two six millimeter Allens that hold that in, so. And that is in there and so what we're now going to do is get our other gasket in place here this one and so you just slide it in like so Now inevitably what ends up happening with this one is you end up getting hung up on the studs. The alignment pins for everything. But once you get that in place, you should be able to look down and the, the at the end there are these cutouts that line up. You should be able to see them line up in the correct place. And then you can drop the torque screws in, get them threaded in. All right, now we have all those bolts threaded in and I'm just gonna get them threaded down the rest of the way. And you wanna kind of rotate around as you snug them up because you can kind of feel as you tighten one, the others will loosen. So you're not looking to tighten them all the way, you're just looking to break them loose and kind of get them each one snugged up a little bit. And we'll get this torque spec flashed on the screen for you. Now that those are all snugged up, take your tool out. 
And let's release the tension on this chain. Okay, we're gonna start by throwing on our gasket for the spark plug holes. And we have cleaned everything up, so you will wanna make sure you do that. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the valve cover gasket on, but first, uh, the recommended interval or recommended maintenance for this is to put RTV in six mounting points. So we're actually gonna be putting it at the corners here, here, and at the, where the half moon goes down into the cylinder head here and here on the other side of it. And then at the other side of this chain tensioner, one here and one here. So there's your six. One, two, three, four, five, six of these points. And so you don't want to go crazy because you don't want this stuff to go everywhere, but you want to just make sure you got some dabs at these ceiling points. Now we got that RTV, we're gonna lower this down. Now you will wanna make sure at the mounting points, you kinda of do, I like to try to get one and done and try to get one shot on here so you're not gonna to touch this stuff a bunch. So get it on to these studs, get the clear past everything, and then get it down and seat it in these corners. And same thing over here. Get this half moon really sat, sat down in there and make sure these corners are in there real good. Now we're all set and we're gonna grab our valve cover that we've cleaned off and throw that on. Let's throw our valve cover on and we have cleaned this all up. And you, you wanna to try to get it on the studs, but then again, get it flat down on here and kind of work everything down. Once you have done that, we can do the opposite of our install and we are all set with our valve cover gasket and chain tensioner DIY. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.